we are delighted that you're joining us for worship today. Before we proceed, I'd like to introduce you to a new member of our ministry team here at Bridgewater United and our Be United Digital Ministry Network, Reverend Kim Curlett. Thank you, Neil. It's good to be here. So, Kim, tell us a little bit about yourself as a way of introducing you to our community. Sure. So uh, my name is Reverend Kim Curlett, as Neil just said, and I am an ordained minister in the United Church of Canada since 2019. I'm coming to you from uh, Elmsdale, which was Riverview United Church, and Nine Mile River United Church, where I served for five years. And I'm really excited. I just bought a, a home in Hebville, so you're stuck with me for a while, and I can't wait for us to get started together. Wonderful. I look forward to sharing this ministry experience with Kim and with our entire communities as well. And I hope that you will be excited and inspired to continue to join us and be part of our wider, broader, wonderful ministry here at Bridgewater United and our Be United Digital Ministry. Amen. As we continue to build on the excitement of this new ministry of ours, I invite us to, to join together in worship, to seek God's presence, to guide us, to inspire us, and to encourage us in our faithfulness and in our discipleship as the followers of Jesus in this place, in our community, and in the world. Come, let us worship. How do I explain racism to children? Can children be empowered to challenge racism? Can we talk about systemic racism with young children? The Bible doesn't talk about racism explicitly. Why do we need to? How can I share about white privilege with children in constructive ways that doesn't make them feel guilty? How can I talk about residential schools with children? What are some faith-based responses to racism? How do I talk about the Bible and anti-racism together? How do I explain racism Can children, children? be empowered to challenge racism? The Bible doesn't talk about how racism. How can I share? How do I talk about how colonization? Can I talk about how, about how, about how, about how do I talk about racism? How do I talk about the Bible and anti-racism together? To be the Bible doesn't talk about racism. About racism. What are some practical ways we can talk about racism in our churches? How do I explain racism to children? Are you a minister, teacher, youth leader? Are you someone who cares about the world our kids grow up in? Do you find it challenging finding the right words when youth ask tough questions about race and racism? You're a change maker, and we're here to help you answer these big questions. Introducing our new curriculum, I am a change maker. This course is your toolkit to teach anti-racism to children aged six to 12. This brand new course from the United Church of Canada empowers you to raise anti-racist kids and build a more just world. Let's grow together to create a more equitable future for everyone. Our scripture for reflection today comes from the 42nd chapter of the prophet Job. Job answered the Lord, I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me that I did not know. Hear, and I will speak. I will question you, and you declare to me. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. The Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends, and the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then there came to him all his brothers and sisters and all who had known him before, and they ate bread with him in his house. They showed him sympathy and comforted him for all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. And each of them gave him a piece of money and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job 
more than his beginning. And he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. He named the first Jemima, the second Keziah, and the third Kareen Hapak. In all the land, there were no women so beautiful as Job's daughters. And their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his children and his children's children four generations. And Job died old and full of days. May God's blessing be upon these words of scriptures and upon our hearts as we reflect upon them in faithful meditation. Thanks be to God. Amen. One of the things that I find challenging is when I get an earworm. Have you ever heard that phrase? Do you know what I mean when I mentioned that I have an earworm? It's not a worm that is living in your ear. It's actually a song. That you hear a certain song, and perhaps, perhaps it might be something that you hear first thing on the radio in the morning when you wake up. And then you have that song stuck in your head all day long. And you can't get rid of it. And that song just keeps repeating and repeating. That's what an earworm is. Well, I have an earworm today as a result of the reading from the book of Job. And the hymn that I have is How Great Thou Art. Many of us know it. If we don't know the words, many of us know the tune, or at least we know the refrain. The first verse begins with, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hand hath made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. And then that wonderful refrain, how great thou art, how great thou art. Those words kept coming to me when I was reflecting and reading that selection from the book of Job. That's only one portion of the life of Job. Job was someone who, who learned how to put his trust into God. But Job always didn't. And there were so many calamities, so many disasters, so many disfortunes that came upon Job that he started to think that God was, was punishing him, was punishing him for, for things he did and, and didn't like Job. And Job took that very seriously, that God was not on his side, but was against him. And then there came a turning point in the life of Job. When he realized, when he acknowledged how great God is. And that transition was a transition of his heart, but also his mind. It was a transitional time in his faith when he learned, when he acknowledged how great God was and how that God was offering praise and how God was to be thankful and thanked for the wonders and the blessings he had received. In that moment, when Job realized that God was the source of many blessings, and his lamenting and his hardships turned into a source of joy. The life that Job had experienced was made better. He realized that all that he lost because he transformed himself, God restored his many blessings. 
When Job stopped focusing on himself and thinking of others, God's blessings were poured upon him. His riches were restored. That short little word, those few verses from the book of Job's, talks about how that his life was changed. How he went from a rags to a riches story again. Now there's no promises that, that when we offer our praise and our thanks to God for delivering us from, from a disaster, that, that God will transform us into a richness. But richness is not only material. It's not only money. It's in wisdom and an insight. It's a transition of heart and a transition of life and faith. Have you ever experienced a, an extraordinary time of transition in your life? A time when, when your outlook changed completely? One of the things that I'm due to happen in my life very soon is another visit to the optometrist. I'm noticing that uh, some of those images that are a bit further are starting to get a little fuzzy around the edges. And so I'll have to go see the doctor again to get uh, a new prescription so that I can see more clearly. I can't see that or correct my vision on myself. Sometimes it takes others to help me with that. And the optometrist will, will give me a new prescription. And the opticians will give me new glasses, new lenses. And so I'll see the world differently. Job, when he was able to look at the world differently, when he was able to look at his faith and his trust in God differently, then his whole life changed. His whole outlook changed. And the, how he saw his blessings in his life changed. And then he was inspired to be the prophet, to be a beacon, to be an individual who would proclaim God's joy and blessings around him. And it took that experience of the calamities in his life, that transition, that time of difference in his life that was, was disastrous and turned those things into joy and to realize that in those times of pain and challenge and sorrow and disaster, God was there with them. It wasn't God who was causing them or inspiring them. It was God who was giving him the strength and the courage to endure them. <sighs> that is wonderful. That is a wonderful experience for Job to go through, and that is our opportunity as well, to experience those times in our midst when we don't feel that God is against us or not with us, but how God is with us. And so that we can transform our times of hope and disaster to see them as a blessing, to see them the blessings around us, to see things with new eyes and as people of faith, to see things with a new heart, a new vision. We're going to be challenged. We're going to be challenged in our life. We're going to be challenged in our faith. But that doesn't mean that God isn't with us. It only affirms to us that God is there in our midst with us in that struggle, in that challenge. We're often called to be the people of Job, to be like Job, to remind ourselves that, that we are to offer God our praise, to offer God our thankfulness, to offer God our willingness to let God guide us and to be the source of our blessings and to be the source of our courage in our times of struggle and challenge and hardship. And it may be hard to see God in our midst in those times. But it's in those times that we need to seek God's presence most abundantly, most profoundly. 
As you can see, our sanctuary here is still decorated from our recent observance of Thanksgiving. How our gardens, how our lives have brought forth a bounty of blessings. And we're reminded that in this time of Thanksgiving, this is not the only time that we give thanks to God, but we're to give, to give our thanks to God at all times. Not just in time of harvest, not just in time of abundance, not just in time of celebrations, but every day. To open our eyes and our hearts to see that, that God is restoring us like God restored the life of Job. And to recognize that our lives are filled and our lives are full of blessings and full of abundance. When we see things differently, we acknowledge that the source of our blessings is the God who journeys with us each and every day, who inspires us, encourages us, and gives us hope. Thanksgiving is one day on our calendar, but it's also an entire season. An entire season to remind ourselves that we're to give our thanks and our gratitude to God for the blessings we have received, that our life is full, our life is abundant. And Job reminds us of that, to look at things differently, to look at things with, with eyes of faith, and to see the presence of God in our midst each and every day. As we continue to journey through this, this wonderful season of autumn, this wonderful seasons surrounded by the beauty of creation, the abundance of gardens, a pile of thanksgiving. May we also be reminded to give our thanks to God and with eyes of faith and with hearts of, of abundance, may we be mindful to continually offer God our praise and our thanks with new eyes, with new hope, with new vision. May we be assured that God is with us in our joys, in our challenges, in our sorrows, and in our celebrations. O oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the things thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. How great thou art. How great thou art. Amen. As a community of faith with hearts and spirits united in worship, let us join together in prayer. Loving God, we know that you can do all things, and that although your way of justice and peace can get sidetracked by our shortcomings, it can never be interrupted. As you continue to desire to work through us, even when we are not fully aware of your guiding presence. Too often, like Job, we have uttered and spoken things of which we do not understand, things beyond our imagination and comprehension. We have celebrated diversity while ignoring differences that make us uncomfortable. We have developed theories on inclusion while maintaining practices of exclusion. We have taught full acceptance while living out a way of partial tolerance. Help us to have vision within our hearts of the inconsistencies in our lives and within our faith expression and discern the dedicated presence of your spirit in guiding our paths of love truth, justice, harmony, and peace. Despite roadblocks and barriers we encounter along our journey of faith, 
and within our collective experiences as a faith community. Strengthen us so we might remain faithful to the path you invite us to walk with you. We know the journey is not easy and that we share this path with many who are challenged by events, experiences, and struggles that make daily living exhausting and burdensome. As companions on a journey, and knowing you walk with us, may we also be a companion and a source of courage for others with whom we walk beside. In a time of silent communion between our hearts and lives and your attentive listening spirit, we pray for those in our lives whom we are holding in our hearts. We pray for the traumatized people and lands enduring wars, natural disasters, oppression, hurt, harm. We pray for our community of faith and those who are our siblings united together in faith and love. We pray for our church and for our ministry, the ministry we collectively share with one another, our community, and the world. We offer to you the prayers of our hearts, the prayers of our lives, and we offer them to you and into your tender care as we offer the words that Jesus inspired us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. What can I do? What can I bring? What can I say? What can I sing? I'll sing with joy. I'll say a prayer. I'll bring my love. I'll do my share. Let us celebrate the abundant ways we have been blessed as we offer our gifts and dedicate them to God for blessing and transformation. Let us pray. We give thanks and desire your blessing, God, to be upon the gifts we share and offer. Through the blessing of your presence, may all we offer be inspired with your grace and love as you lead us in being transformative messengers of your love through the ministry we share. Thank you for the blessings we have received and our calling to be a blessing to others. Amen. We celebrate and we affirm that God is with us no matter what we do or where we go or what we're going through. And we carry that affirmation in our hearts as we move forward, as we go out into God's world among the people of God. Let us go forward as the followers of Jesus and to be the light of God's love to all. Be united.
Heritage.